Kaifu, in the race, the AI race between the U.S. and China, who will win in decades to come? Uh, I, I think both U.S. and China have tremendous strengths in AI. Um, I think their strengths are actually a bit different. Uh, the commercial companies in the commercial areas, I think U.S. tends to be much stronger in uh, enterprise applications uh, like C3 AI and um, uh, Palantir and companies like that. And China is now showing a lot of progress in robotics, especially for manufacturing and warehouses. And the two countries are both developing great companies in autonomous vehicles, healthcare, and internet. But largely, those companies don't compete against each other due to the current uh, geopolitical tendencies. So I think both countries are, uh, we're seeing tremendous AI companies leveraging the strengths of each country, in the case of U.S. enterprise software, in the case of China manufacturing. So I, I, I hope AI will uh, end up being showing, making companies in both countries uh, winners. In China, are Chinese companies looking to, you know, have more of an influence domestically rather than internationally, or will that change over time? Uh, I think right now most of the Chinese AI companies are focused domestically. Um, and should they go abroad, they're more likely to go to countries uh, that uh, have a strong uh, uh, commercial relationship with China and uh, no limitations on technologies. So perhaps the um, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Middle East, Africa would be more likely, maybe South America, uh, whereas I think U.S. will tend to have more influence on the traditional areas like English-speaking countries and um, uh, Europe and, and Japan. So I think each country will naturally go to the regions uh, where it has uh, some advantage or it has fewer limitations. Kaifu, what does the world look like in 40 years? So, I, you know, is it going to be like the Terminator and you get asked that very often at dinner parties or what's your kind of your vision on where we'll end up? Um, I think it's uh, two very different possible outcomes. Um, as you know, I wrote the book AI 2041. We try to look 20 years out. Uh, you want me to look 40 years out. Uh, I do think we have two <laughs> possible two possible outcomes. There's not a lot of scenarios in the middle. Um, I think um, either we get our act together and figure out uh, how countries can collaborate um, and, uh, and finally realize there, there are many issues we can work together on, like climate and healthcare, and that in a positive exemplars lead the world and technology problems are overcome. Then we really reach a world of plenitude where all these technologies will uh, basically eradicate poverty and hunger and also um, uh, positive uses will make us live healthier. That's one outcome. Uh, the other is that uh, technologies can be misused by people. I, I don't think technologies will become evil itself and, and, and like a Terminator or, or a, a dystopia like that, but I do think they provide very powerful weapon to bad people and um, uh, terrorists, for example, or uh, countries that choose to use them in a very um, damaging way to the rest of the world, uh, because I think technology amplifies uh, people's capabilities and using, uh, you know, take autonomous weapons as an example. It's something that could wipe out uh, lots mm -hmm. of people.